What's one of the most venomous snakes in the world? They've got a short stumpy body and a skinny little tail. You're gonna love them. That's right, we're looking for a death adder. Now, while death adders are found all across Australia, the species we have here in Darug country is the common death adder. One of the best spots to find them now is the Sydney sandstone. They've got this incredible venom which kills their prey almost instantly. They're an amazing creature and hopefully there's one sitting under the leaf litter waiting for us. So let's go. Now, death adders are ambush predators, which means they stay in one spot and wait for the prey to come to them. They'll burrow under the leaves and lie coiled up in the same spot for days and days and days, waiting and waiting. One of the reasons this area is still good for death adders is just this on the ground here. You can see leaf litter. It provides amazing cover for them. And without that, they can't hide. There's another reason they like it here, and it's this here, rocks. The rocks provide warmth in winter, but also, more importantly, they provide crevices to protect them when the country burns. You can see there's evidence of fire here, and it is present throughout their habitat now. So they need somewhere to shelter where they're not gonna get burnt during a fire. Let's keep going. Hopefully we get one up here. I've got my eyes peeled. You should have a look too. Oh, this looks like a perfect area here. Ugh, this is exhausting. Trying to find a death adder is like trying to find a needle in a haystack. A really, really massive haystack. And a really deadly needle. Anyway, we've got to crack on. So let's go that way. Look, there's heaps of leaf litter around here and there's some good rocks. We're just gonna keep searching and we might just turn one up and you never know. Yeah. Oh, ho, oh, oh, ho, right here, right here. Look at that. This is what we're looking for. Oh, ho, oh, oh, you see that? <laughs> this is what we're looking for. <laughs> you can see he is furious. He's been sitting under the leaf litter and you can see these beautiful bands. This is one of their threat displays, is to spread themselves out, to make themselves look as big as possible, which is what he's doing by flattening himself out. I cannot believe this. Oh, whoa. Oh, he is really, really angry. You can see why he's sitting here. This little pathway here would be a great little spot for skinks and things to run past. And because he's a small death adder, he'd only be eating small lizards and things. He really doesn't like me being here. But you can see he's probably 30 centimetres long and I'm 50 centimetres away. His strike range is only about half his body length. You have to be more careful than that. So I'm staying well out of strike range. This snake one of the things they're well known for is this triangular head that you can see. There's these two bulges behind each eye and they're his venom glands. They've got this very powerful venom. Why have venom that's so powerful when you only need to kill little skinks? The thing is that this animal is not an athlete. It's not gonna be able to chase down something that is just bitten. It needs venom that kills it almost instantly. Whoa, whoa! He's really striking out. That's crazy. He would quite happily inject that into me if I got too close because he's afraid. He's only this big and I'm a monster. The way people get bitten is by picking them up or trying to kill them. 
the best thing you can do if you see a death adder, have a look at it and walk away. The venom of the death adder is powerfully neurotoxic. It paralyzes the prey item almost instantly. So the first thing that happens once the animal is bitten, it finds it much, much harder to move and eventually impossible to breathe. I've never been bitten by a snake like a death adder. If I were bitten, there's no telling how it would affect me. But there's some things that would be sure of happening. It would be an incredibly painful bite. It would be an incredibly painful feeling of the venom moving through my body, through the lymph. And what would invariably happen is I would start getting terrible, terrible headaches and I may even start to be paralyzed. I wouldn't be able to pick things up. My eyes might not stay open. I might lose control of my tongue and not be able to talk. It could be terrible. If you are bitten by any snake that you're not sure of, first aid, which means a compression bandage at the bite site and then all the way up the limb and don't move. As long as you say calm and still, get medical attention to come to you, you can survive a bite. Okay, here we are back in the lab with a common death adder. Isn't this amazing? Their scientific name is Acanthophus antarcticus. Now, unlike the one we found out in the bush, this one is a gray form of death adder and he's much, much bigger. And it's fantastic to have him here so we can look at all the features that make them one of the most spectacular snakes in Australia. Now, look at this tail. This is one of my favorite parts of the death adder. You'll see that the end part, the end section, is a different color to the rest of the tail. And the scales are slightly different on the tip of the tail. And that's because the tail tip is used as a lure to draw in things like frogs and lizards and birds and mammals who think it might be a delicious wiggly worm and as soon as they get close enough wham the death adder grabs them and eats them up another amazing thing about these death adders is they don't lay eggs they have live birth so a big female death adder will move around until early spring. She'll find the best warmer spot so her babies will develop quickly. And then around about or late spring, she will give birth to up to 18 little tiny wriggly death adders. Oh, they're so cute when they're tiny. Who would know that they turn into a big hulking monster like this? Now in the wild, Death adders don't have it very easy. They have a lot of predators. Larger lizards, birds, even rats and things like that like to eat the small death adders. Foxes will eat them. Sometimes they're even stepped on by cows. Those poor little guys, they can't catch a break. Wow, what an extraordinary creature. These snakes are so unique. They look different, they hunt different. They even have babies in a different way. I think they're one of my favorite snakes, favorite animals even. I'm so thrilled we can have a really good close look at one in the lab and even see one out in the bush. Thanks for coming along with us today and until next time, stay wild. I'm out in the bush searching for stuff. And I need you to search out the like and subscribe button for Henry's Wildlife. Stay wild.